Well, hello guys, Kevin the Comic Doctor coming to you with a uh, pretty cool episode of One on One, if I do say so myself. I'm going to talk today a little bit about dry cleaning. I've done this before, but today I'm going to go into a little more detail about, about dry cleaning and the tools. The tools you should pick up if you want to get started in uh, the dry cleaning of your own comic books. Now, again, you're going to hear all kinds of different opinions on this, what you should use. These are the basic tools that I use every day. Do I vary from these? Do I move away from these? Sometimes I do, but generally speaking, these are my go-to items, and I'm going to share those with you today. Uh, I'm also going to maybe give you a few tips on how to start dry cleaning the comic. I don't have any overhead, like, you know, of me working on comics today. I don't have that set up here, I'm afraid, but I do have uh, the tools over here to share with you, and then I'll, I'll bring a comic book out and uh, I'll kind of show how I would go about dry cleaning, how I would start, and things you want to uh, keep in mind as you're dry cleaning a comic book. So I hope that's of interest to you, and I welcome you all here. If you're new here, guys, I'm Kevin the Comic Doctor. I'm a comic book presser and authorized CGC dealer located way up in Oshawa, Ontario, Canada. And again, these are one of those videos I get asked to do from time to time, and so I figured I'd come on here and do that. There was a little bit of a lull in my CGC unboxings. I had a whole mess of boxes delivered last week, and this week I've got only one so far. So there will be a CGC unboxing probably two tomorrow or possibly thursday as well and exciting i have my funko pop i want to unveil to you guys and that's going to be coming up pretty soon as well too on a special show you're not going to want to miss that um a great little surprise to share with you uh, very soon okay let's go over to uh my overhead cam where's there it is and i'm going to talk to you first about the tools here we go this is it guys the dry cleaning tools um you know uh this is my go-to right here. My stead letter uh, erasers. These are the best erasers you can buy, in my opinion, for dry cleaning comic books. They leave very little residue on the face of your book. And, and, and you, you really want that when you are uh, dry cleaning comics. You don't want to leave rubber residue. Sometimes it can't be helped, but, but these ones tend not to leave a lot of that uh, residue behind. Now, also, guys, if you have any questions for me, Hit the subscribe button, go over to the chat section. You can throw me a uh, question there. If you want me to clarify anything, or any questions in, in particular, fire them away, but you have to be a subscriber to do so. And I'll answer your questions when I'm done. I'll, I'll go over there once I'm done introducing the, the different items, and then I'll go and show you the comic, and I'll come back and answer any of the further questions you might have. I don't imagine it'll be a super long video. So anyways, back to it. This one here, you can pick up the stead letter um, erasers you can pick up at uh michael's they're very expensive at michael's actually you can pick them up uh at your fr your local art store or amazon right amazon next we have um oh and by the way what i love about these guys you know guys you don't you know they just don't stay like that i cut them up like i cut my erasers up i got big ones small ones medium sized ones I, I i cut the pencil up to or the eraser up to how i to whatever i whatever need i i may have at that moment okay now to make sure i don't uh, take off color from the face of my comic book because that's a very common thing to do when you're dry cleaning comics. If you're not careful, the white area, no problem. But the uh, the colored areas, sometimes you've got a white piece of area inside of a colored area and you want to be very sure you don't hit that colored area because you can, um, by accident, remove color. You want to have a shield like this. Um, you can buy packs of these shields on Amazon for like, I think, 10 or 12 bucks. You get 10 of them. They're, they're metal ones. These are, the, these are the ones I like the most. And what's also nice about these two, sometimes in the face of your comic book, you have um, grunge. <laughs> Dried up piece of crud, I call it. Crud. And what I like to do is these make a great, a great uh, tool to scrape dried crud off of your comic. But I'm going to warn you, not all shields are made alike. And this one here is a really nice one. It's got nice smooth edges. Some shields are very, very sharp. So if you try doing that scrape thing with, uh, with one of the sharp ones, you can actually damage your comic. So what you want to do is you want to get a nice file or a piece of sandpaper, and you want to dull the edges, make them nice and rounded so it doesn't hurt your comic book. So anyways, a nice uh, metal shield, eraser shield to protect the colored areas of your comic book. That is a, a must-have as well. Now you're going to notice here, these are called chem sponges, guys. This one is a used one. This one is a clean one. And I don't know if you notice a difference there. Check out the difference in color. And this is not even that dirty yet. Um, these babies, uh, they attract the dirt. And all you do is you take this and you, you, you basically 
wipe this on the face of your comic book very uh, gently, and it will draw up any of the dirt that's on the comic. And if you think I'm lying, look, look at the dirt. This is, this is actually sucked up. It actually sucks up the dirt. And if I were to take a blade and cut this open, the inside would be just as clean as the other one I just showed you over here. But these chem sponges are also available on Amazon. You can pick them up uh, at any uh, art conservation shop. Um, they're probably 10 bucks a pop, I would think. Uh, I buy them in bulk from this um, place up here in, 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 uh, in, in, in near, near Toronto. But these are excellent. Again, you can cut these up to any size you want. And these are a great tool to clean the face of your book. And I'll tell you, these are a really good thing to have when you are finished erasing. Because like I said, sometimes when you're erasing the comic book, you're going to leave. And sometimes you can't notice unless you really look carefully. You can leave uh, erase your marks on the face of your comic or on the cover of your comic book. CGC will dock you points for that. So how do you get rid of that erase your mark? Well, guess what? These chem sponges, they're rubber as well. They actually take off that uh, rubber residue. And to go one step further, I have my handy dandy. This is like my Linus, you know, Charlie Brown Linus. This is my Linus um, uh, blanket. <laughs> I love this. Guys, a piece of old, nicely worn out cotton t-shirt. <laughs> you got to have a few of these hanging around. These are great to, again, buff the face of your comic book. If you've got erase your marks and you want to get rid of the erase your marks, uh, use your chem sponge first. And then I take a nice piece of very soft cotton. And I like cotton more than I do. I know a lot of guys use uh, microfiber and some guys use actual cotton pads. I just like my cotton shirt. It's nice and soft. You know, you wash it every once in a while. Um, and uh, yeah, I've been we all have an abundance of this, right, guys, in our house? We've got tons of t-shirts our wives would love us to destroy. We'll put them to good use. Use them on the face of your comic book. And you can buff your comic book with this soft, soft cloth as well. Um, now, a couple of other tools. And guys, guys, that's pretty much really the brunt of it. Now, I also use one of these electric erasers. This thing here, if I can zoom in on it, it'll, it'll come into focus in a sec. It's going to be in focus. There we go. Oh, there we go. The dirt, and I like the Dermot ones. You can buy these again on Amazon for like 12, 13 bucks. I think it comes with a battery too, for crying out loud. I like using these uh, around the staples. Now, again, the book has to be in good shape, but a, a book that has like staple, you know, dirt around the staple or along the spine, I like to use these. They're very gentle. Um, you have to be careful with these on books that are fragile, but on, on books that are in good shape, relatively good shape, they can handle these. And this can get into areas that sometimes the eraser can't and do so quickly. You're in and out really fast because it's, 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 it's vibrating and it's, it's going really quick, right? So again, I like my, uh, my Derwitt uh, electric eraser. I'm gonna go into focus or what? There we go. No, there we go. All right. And then I have some some tools that I use that are a little more uh, specific, right? Like for detailed work. I have a square one here, which I don't use all that often, to be honest. Is gonna focus on me here. Let's see. There we go. Maybe it's too small. There we go. So these are erasers, right, guys? Uh, detailed erasers. We got a square one, and we got a, a, a this this one here. I like the most, more like a round tip, and essentially. You've got an eraser. It's basically an eraser. Come on. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to get it in focus for you, but it won't. Anyways, there we go. Oh, these suckers here are very fine. These do leave residue. <laughs> I can tell you right now. But I like them because you can get really into, um, you know, if you got lettering around the around, you know, if you get the lettering of the title of the comic book or around, you know, where the price is of the comic book on the older books, um, you know, the, the eraser, the eraser goes right, it feeds right back into it and you can buy these replacements for them. And these again are on Amazon and these are made by, uh, these are called mono zeros, mono zeros by Tom Bow, T O M B O W. This is the one I like the most. Again, it does leave residue. I like using it in conjunction with my shield. Uh, you know, especially for areas that are really being, you know, picky or very in a very fine area that I have a hard time getting into. Use these together and you can usually get in to uh, those tight areas. But again, leaves residue. So what do you do when you're done using those that tool? You take your chem sponge and you wipe the area you worked on and you buff it really quick with a piece of, uh, you know, 
piece of cloth. Again, I like my cotton swab. Now, people are saying, Kevin, wait a second. I don't see you wearing plastic gloves. Where are your rubber latex gloves? I don't like wearing latex gloves. I just don't. So what I do is I make sure my hands are clean. I wash my hands a lot. And that's why my fingers are all chewed up and gross because they're all dried out for all the, all the uh, you know, the, um, what do you call it? The alcohol I put on my hands, they clean them. I don't like uh, not feeling the comic book under my, in my hands. Uh, I feel that when I use, and I've tried using latex gloves. If I'm working on a really, really high-end book that's really old or very fragile, I will throw a glove on one hand. But I like to have one hand uh, free of that so I can really manipulate my workspace better i just find with the gloves on that barrier freaks me out i like to have i like to have c complete control all right so those are the basic tools right there before i go into um before i go into the uh to showing you the comic i will actually take some questions here if you have any again guys try to keep your questions to this topic dry cleaning of comic books let me um where is it? Chat window. There it is. We got a few people here. How you doing, guys? All right. Wayne's already here. Wayne's looking forward to this. I've started slowly trying, referencing the tools of the trade video you had created. That's that that one is just yeah, I have a lot of information there as well. My problem is big clumsy hands and lack of patience, which I guess is a bit a bad mix. Look at I'm showing you this stuff. Do with it as you will. Not everybody has the aptitude for this type of work. It is detailed, fine work. Um, and, and, and some people find this cathartic and enjoyable. Other people find it like watching, you know, they, they find it very boring, like watching paint dry. So it all depends on the kind of person you are and the personality you are. You might not like doing this sort of thing. So then it's not up to your alley, but you know what, if you're going to do one here and there and it's, you know, just try it and see what you think. That's all you can do. And yeah, I know, uh, having, you know, big, you know, football hands or whatever you want to call that might not be ideal. <laughs> right. Uh, but all you can do is try and having the right tools. And you know what? You don't, guys, you don't need more than the tools I showed. The, the tools I just showed you there for dry cleaning, that's all you need. You don't really need much more than that. There are other things you can use, but that is all you need to pick up to get started. David Clare got me some brewskis for this. Excellent, David Clare. Good to see you, my friend. John Vargas says, Doc, I'm actually slow, slowly planning and trying to learn from uh, your trade craft. Uh, bought a t shirt press and a dry press ancient one. You know what? The, the, the ancient dry mount presses are gonna, is going to be better than that t shirt press. Use the t-shirt press as your cold press and use that dry mount press. My question is, John Vargas, is what kind of t-shirt press, sorry, what, what model of dry mount press did you get? I got to know. What about absorbing? Yeah, I don't use absorbing. Some guys do. I don't. I don't. I find my chem sponges. I find my chem sponges do the trick. Um, but I don't use absorbing. I know a lot of guys swear by it. I've never, I've never really get into that. Um... Again, what I'm saying is what this is what I use. Doesn't mean it doesn't doesn't work, right? And some guys use, you know, magic erasers, some guys use all kinds of different concoctions. I don't get into that. I keep it simple. Um, yeah. Bad ombre, would you do one on one and group person sessions with a fee? Of course. We could bring our beat up books. You know what, uh uh Mike, I was asked that exact same question by another Mike a few weeks ago. Unfortunately, would I do that? Would I do that? Sure I would, but the problem is I don't have any time to do that. Um, and maybe I will at some point, maybe when I finally, you know, retire from my other job and I have maybe some, maybe have some free time. Maybe I would do like Sunday lessons if people want to come in and I can show them some basic tricks of the trade. You bring in, you know, three or four books and we press and clean them. But the problem with that is some books require uh, long humidification. Remember, I don't use that steaming process so if someone brings in comic book they can bring in 10 different books and we can kind of pick ones that don't necessarily need a lot of humidification yeah it's something i thought about mike that's for sure um i bought my shield and michael's everything else at amazon haven't bought a sponge yet yeah the sponge you got to have that sponge that sponge this this these chem sponges uh, i'll give you an example today i was working with uh, napur today and we were working on a wolverine number one and there was a little black blotch um on the left side of the comic and and i said you try to get rid of that and she said yes i did i said with with the chem sponge she was yes i did i said can you and we have little bits of chem sponge cut up i said can you on my hand show me the pressure you used to remove the 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 the, the blotch and so she kind of you know on my hand i said not enough so i took the sponge and i pushed onto her hand and showed her how how much pressure she should have used so i went back and i and i hit it and the black blotch went away and she's like ah listen it's it's 
it's getting to know the paper and getting to know how much or how far you can go with the paper with the tools you have right that's where you know i kind of like like napur will say you know i've done the exact same thing you did but then when you come in you just it just improves so much more and it's not that she's doing anything wrong she's doing it all right the problem not, it's not even really a problem it's just i just i have i've got many many years of working with all the different books of all the different um genres and i know what the paper can handle it's you know different uh, i know that the paper can handle also i know if the paper's been if the paper's you know um you know degrading i know how much pressure i don't get it right all the time but like 90 99 percent of the time 98 percent of the times i know how far i can go with the paper and i can push it to get the best results out of out of out of the the press right and um so that that's going to be a challenge for all of you if you're starting out. Just how far can I go without hurting the book? That's and and that's why you know like Napur and even Charlo they sometimes uh, stop because they don't want to do damage to the book. They think this is as far as we should go. I don't want to hurt the book, and that is totally what I've told them to do. I go never go farther than you feel comfortable going. If you feel that going any further is going to damage the book, stop. And when I come and I do my 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 uh, review, then we can discuss it and we can attack it and try to get it get it you know like that like that Wolverine number one today, uh, get it to the next level, right? So it's just practice, 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 and taking your time and working on each book one by one. Uh, but, but Mike, you got it right. Amazon has a lot of the stuff you're going to need. And this, Michael's is damn expensive though. Uh, the P Man, hey everyone, hey Kevin, love this video. P Man, welcome. Thanks for coming out, guys. I hope you're finding this in, uh, you're you're finding this uh, informative. Um, John's here. Hey, John, how's it going? Custom made everything this year. The tools of the trade video, excellent. I'm fascinated by your trade. I'm fascinated by yours. Custom made everything. That's Tim, guys. He did a fabulous custom Funko Pop. We're gonna sh we're gonna come on here probably Thursday night and talk to you about this custom Funko he did. You're gonna really love it. Uh, he's a real artist. He's a real artist, and you're gonna love what he's done. And uh, He's going to share with you what he does. And then, you know what? Some of you are going to really, really uh, love it so much. I guarantee you're going to start following him and, and maybe actually work with him one day because he puts together some pretty awesome stuff. Try putting your hand behind a small object that you're trying to get to a focus on. Oh, try putting your hand behind a small object that you're trying. Oh, I see. Good idea. I'll try that. John Short, interesting stuff. I hope so. Peter, shouldn't you have all of us sign a da? Listen, nothing I'm showing today is is, is 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 secret. It's pretty, you know, look at guys. There's so many guys offering, you know, how-to books. You can buy how-to books on how to uh, do this, how to clean books, wet clean books, which I don't get into. But a lot of guys do. There's books out there on all this stuff. The question is, do you do you want to do it? I always use this, this analogy, right? Um, you know, uh, is it Chilton's? Is it Chilton's that used to make the old car the car manuals? Like I go, I have a, my Camaro in the garage. I've owned, you know, Mustangs and I've got the Chilton. I think, I think it's Chilton's, the auto magazines or auto repair manuals. Um, I have like four or five of those manuals because I've owned different cars. And some, you know what? I like to fiddle with the cars. And if I got to change the brakes or I got to fix the windshield, windshield wiper motor, if I got to change out the starter or whatever, I've got this manual I can follow to do the job. But sometimes, sometimes I don't want to do the job. Sometimes it's a little more than I want to do. Maybe I just don't feel like doing it. And so I take my car to a mechanic. The same thing applies here. Try it. If you like cleaning your comic book, uh, comic books, par you know, pardon me, you go ahead and do it. But if you don't enjoy it, or you, you may not enjoy it, uh, you'll, uh, you'll send them to a guy like me or to another presser. And it's funny. And I always bring my buddy Paul up. My buddy Paul he lives in New Brunswick. I don't know if he's watching or not, but but he he you know he was retiring from teaching. He's he did, he's five years on me, lucky guy, and he wanted to learn how to press and clean comics. I said, Paul, you're retiring. Why don't you come and help me? You know, I'll show you how to do it, and you can start helping me because Paul's a, a great guy and he's very artistic in his own right. And but Paul has those football, those big hand, those those baseball glove hands too. That we were talking about earlier. Anyways, Paul came into my office here. And I I set them all up, and he, I gave him the erasers. I gave him all the tools that I just shared with you, and I showed him how to work. And he started working. He worked for about thirty five minutes, and I heard him kind of put the stuff down. I said, "What's up?" He goes, "Whoops." And he, and I said, "What's up?" He goes, "I don't like this." 
it's not for me. And he got up and he left. So there you go. He tried it. He gave it, you know, 35, 45 minutes and Paul was done. Cleaning comic books was not for him. It's not for everybody. It's tedious work, you know, and uh, and you're going to also realize as you start doing it, you know, if you only have one press, it's going to take you, you know, you might do four or five books a week. It's, it's a slow, but not to do it right. It's a slow process. You know, um, that's why I always laugh when guys say, oh, I've got, you know, I do, you know, 2000 books a month. I'm like, oh, wow, you do really? Uh, I'm lucky if I, I'm lucky if me, Charlo and Nippur together, together get done 150, 160 books. Lucky if we get that many done. Um, we pay a lot of attention to the detail with these books. We don't, we don't just throw them in and throw them out. They're there. They, they, they get the, they get looked at very carefully. All right, let's keep going here. Um, the P man says, how much time do you use a dry cleaning method on a book? How far do you go? And it depends on the book. It depends on the book. If the book is filthy, like uh, oftentimes, uh, uh, like for example, a Batman, uh, 181 the first poison ivy those books are always filthy um or uh you know th th those could take upwards uh, of 20 30 40 minutes to clean if you're doing it carefully right it depends how dirty they are um so and again it also depends on the quality of the paper if a book like if you guys saw that x-men number one that i posted on my instagram today or yesterday i forget now I have to sort of work. It's, it's in the humidifier right now, but I didn't spend a hell of a lot of time cleaning that book. I did some cleaning, but I couldn't do much because the book's falling apart. So how much can you do, right? So it all depends on the the the, the how 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 uh, stable the book is and the paper is, uh, because if the book is all full of rips and tears or tape and all that, you can't do much cleaning anyways. So every book is different. You could spend anywhere from two minutes up to 20, 30 minutes cleaning a book. And I'm talking covers, right? Covers. Um, Charlie D. Hey, Kevin, how you doing, Charlie? Do you use Magic Eraser? I do not use Magic Eraser. Uh, I find it a little aggressive. You got you got like chemicals in there. I try to stay away from chemicals, guys. I'd love to get Nippur on here one day to talk to you again. She, uh, I, I was very fortunate to find Nippur. She is a paper conservator. Nippur, if you're watching this, say hello. Let us know you're here. Maybe we'll ask you some questions too because she sometimes watches the videos. Um, you know, I always kind of figured this, but you know, she's a paper conservative. She studied paper, paper cleaning, and she knows what chemicals do to the paper. So when you start using, you know, magic, there's, there's bleaches and what have her, what have you in, in magic eraser. Does it work? Sure. I've seen it. I've seen it clean up books. Great. But I prefer to use a much more neutral or, or benign approach to, um, uh, to cleaning. I don't like it to be, I don't like to use chemicals. I don't like to use liquids. Don't get, don't get me wrong. Sometimes I'll use a little bit of distilled water uh, to clean a book, but that's it. I don't, I try to avoid chemicals. So I, a magic eraser, just read what's in, what's inside one of those things. And you're going to see it's putting all sorts of chemicals on your book. Now, if you don't care about that, <laughs> then go ahead and do it. Me personally, I don't like doing that. Moneyball Comics, love the comic doctor. Thanks for sharing your tools to trade. Moneyball, good to see you. Nice talking to you all on, on uh, Instagram the other day. Thanks for coming and joining us tonight, Moneyball. John Vargas, a seal commercial 210D. Buddy, that's a great press. Seal 210 is a great press, John. Uh, yeah, make that your main press. Make sure the, the, uh, the, um, Thermo th thermostats working properly you can you can keep a consistent temperature on it that's a great press and use the the uh the t-shirt press as your cold press because that seal is far superior jive turkeys here if i'm not mistaken there's no chemical cleaners and magic erasers it's just micro abrasive foam is it uh, i've heard other otherwise i could be wrong but even when you just said there, micro abrasive i don't like that <laughs> because it because what is mike micro abrasion is is using little fine particles to scrape off a layer right and don't get me wrong if you look very closely at this uh at this uh, sponge you'll notice some yellow over here do you not well that's ink that's ink guys this will uh, the, these sponges just like these white erasers will take off ink so you have to tread very carefully and very slowly whether you're using a um all i'm saying is the magic eraser will take it off a hell of a lot faster than this and if you are you know not being as attentive as you should all of a sudden you can have a white streak in your comic book i see you know where i see that a lot i see it a lot on amazing spider-man 129 guys go kind of crazy on the yellow and all of a sudden you got a white streak or two white streaks you know you got to be really cautious with these cleaners and these different tools you're using um 
smash that like button yeah i forgot to tell you guys 23 likes got 34 of you in the room right now please hit that like if you wouldn't mind that'd be certainly appreciated let's get up to just try to get to 40 likes that'd be wonderful 40 is a nice round number 50 is even better but 40 is good um digital man says, says i only uh, press and clean modern books only that's cool that's your comfort zone then do that do your comfort zone um Jermaine, because they're also very different than than a book from the 1950s, 1960s, 1940s. They're all different. Jermaine's here. Kelso, I've people are using UV lighting or done or done. Sorry, or some type of lighting to lighten the pages. Is that thing or did I no? It is a thing. Jermaine, there's all kinds of things. Let's, guys, let's go back to the old days. Let's go back to, you know, 10, 12, 13 years ago when I first started offering my service. And, I, and I've said this before. I, I used to get emails hate mail you know you shouldn't be doing this to the comic books why are you pressing cut you're, you're changing the books around damn you damn you and then it seemed that as soon as cgc started offering it through ccs all of a sudden people started kind of relaxing on that and uh the pressing and cleaning has now obviously become a standard part of our, our hobby the um but now we're people people are always you know innovating and going one step further there's a guy who, who invented a washing machine for comic books there are guys who, I think the same guy invented some kind of like a UV box. And, uh, and hey, listen, does it work? Sure, it works. Sure, it works. There are different, you know, does it make your books lighter? Can you get rid of stains? Yes, you can. But just like I said with these sponges, you, you can do damage with these if you're not using them carefully. Trust me, you can do a hell of a lot more damage by wetting your comic books and adding peroxides and things like that. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. All I'm saying is tread careful, my friends. Tread careful, okay? Um, you know, take your time. Learn learn it slowly and experiment and see what works for you. Uh, because I offer this service to you, my friends, to my clients, I do not like to, um, to, to again, I've said this before, I'm not a cowboy when it comes to your books. I'm very um, conservative when I'm cleaning books. I get them to a certain point and then I'm done. They're clean, way cleaner than, than they were when they come in. Am I scrubbing them? Am I washing them with water and different? No, I'm not. I don't. But some guys do. It's just, it's, it's a very, uh, and, and also you got to, you got to understand something. You know, if you charge $25, I, most guys charge around 25 Canadian with this US conversion or whatever. That's what they kind of charge now for a press on a, on a, on a book of lower value, you know, standard book, I guess you could say. Um, to wash a book, to clean a book, from what I understand, can take a lot of time i actually talked to nipur about removing stains you know using the uh you know using um gravity to kind of remove using lots of water to almost wash the stain out of a book uh it's very time consuming so how much you charge somebody so i've got a book say i've got a book like i got this book here like this archie book for example it's not a big book you know archie giant number 76 say it had a big dirt stain on it and i'm going to charge 25 dollars to press and clean it but if you want me to wash the book it's going to cost you two hundred dollars because you know all of a sudden now it's a four or five or six hour or ten hour process. Is it worth it on a book like that? It's not. So honestly, washing books really to me is not really practical for from a, from a person running a business because what are you going to charge people to do it? Unless it's a big book, like a book that's going to be worth doing. Because you know, anyways. But yeah, a lot of guys. You are you are right. A lot of guys are playing with all kinds of crazy different types of techniques now. You're not you're not wrong. Um, what's going on here? Oh, there we go. Okay, John Vargas, nice hat, nice heart. Divi Claire, uh, what is the CL210 press originally used for? Dry mounting. And I don't have any examples here. Actually, I do have examples, but I don't think you can see it. Behind me, well, you might know what I'm talking about. You know when you used to get photographs? And you can go to Costco, actually. Costco offers is you take your photographs to the framing department at Costco, and they'll they'll mount your photograph onto a piece of board like a piece of wood or a piece of uh, la uh piece of uh not plywood but like a uh masonite or what have you that process requires a dry a dry mounting press and that's basically what these the seal 210 was used for mounting photographs to boards you can also mount them to foam core um and if you want to find an old dry mount press you're having a hard time finding one a great place to look is your local framing store because a lot of framing stores don't want to do it anymore so if you call them up, they may have an old dry mount press sitting in the back they want to get rid of. I found a couple that way, actually. Um, 
Yeah, so you're right, John. It's exactly right there. Thank you for smashing the like button. Uh, cool comics collector panel poly or sorry pencil polymer erasers work pretty well too with leaving little residue behind. Magic eraser will remove the gloss. It will. That's what I'm saying. You got to be really careful. And, and and honestly, if you read the magic eraser uh, or instructions, they tell you to dampen the eraser as well too. So, anyways, again, guys, here are my tools right here. Nothing fancy. If you're just getting here right now, nothing fancy. Chemical sponges. Um, Stedler um, polymer uh, erasers. You know, some fine, fine tools here. I'm going to use, uh, I'll use uh, the, there we go. Some of these tools here for doing fine detailed work. Of course, a shield to protect the colored areas and go Go to your, you know, your your drawers and pick up an old T-shirt, that your favorite softest T-shirt that's been worn a million times. Cut up into squares like this size, and 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 use these to to, to buff your your comics, especially the after the after you've done you're done you're done racing them. This will get rid of some of this alone will actually get rid of a lot of that of the residue. But I like using the chem sponge. I find it gets rid of the residue first, and then using the the, the cotton is a nice uh, nice finishing touch. I like that. Okay, let's see what else you guys are saying. I'll go over, I'll go over to the comic in a second and show you guys just some things you can do to 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 uh, be safe while you're cleaning your books. Um, the P-Man, does the UV light uh, tactic hurt the overall integrity of the book? Well, the, the thing with the UV light, from what I understand, I could be wrong here because I don't I don't even do this, guys, but what I understand is they they use they 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 first they introduce um, they introduce peroxides, right? Then they take the peroxides, and then they take the comic and put it into a light box, a UV box, and then they expose that, and that combined with the peroxides really does lighten the book. Sometimes to a point where it's far too unnatural, and and we're getting a lot of. I've been hearing a lot of people complaining that they've been getting a lot of conserved grades, even restored grades from CGC now, when people are taking it too far. Not always, but some are. So just be careful if you're if you're playing with that. Um, and remember, per introducing peroxide to your books does does affect the the, the 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 chemical makeup of the paper. It does affect the paper. It does reduce the lifespan of the paper. I'd like to see these books in 10, 15 years. Hopefully, they're not going to be brittle by that point. It's 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 a similar idea as if you ever had a, my 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 wife for my sister used to take my sister my wife my sister used to take like uh, like lemon juice and put it in your in your hair right in her hair and then go out in the summertime in the sun. And the UV light and all the lemon area would lighten. It's that you know she's a brunette, right? So she'd kind of the tips would get all lightened. It's that kind of same idea. Of course, there's no peroxide. I don't think there's any peroxide in lemon juice. It's the natural acids, but essentially it's, it's the same principle, right? The UV lights mix with the or have a chemical reaction with with the with the um, with the uh, what do you call it? the the peroxide and 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 there you go. You have lighter paper. So I, I just. I just stay away from all that. I've heard submitters are getting purple labels. Yes, I've been hearing that as well. I just said that exactly. Rob, when using a dry mount press for comic books, do you keep the foam pad in or just use no no foam pad? I use the phone, I keep the foam pad in. I do. I don't use metal. I, I, I almost went to metal. In fact, I think I have a I have an invoice here. No, I don't have it. I have like a, I was about to buy a bunch of metal plates to use. And and that's the only reason I like the metal plates is to keep everything nice. When I, it's like taking a pizza and putting in the pizza oven. You have that pizza with that big wood uh, palette. The metal plates kind of act as a similar um, instrument when you're pressing comic books. What I use, I have a couple of, I, don't, I have a couple of boards. Like everybody else, guys, I sandwich. You know, I use these old these pieces of um, these are not cheap. These are like uh, pieces of illustration board, uh, uh, Brain Bridge's illustration board. I sandwich the books in here, and then of course I use and then, but these get these get marred up over time too. So you gotta be really careful when you when you put them in. If these are all full of debris or dents, those will transfer to the comic. So you have to protect the comic with a giant magazine board, you know, that sort of thing. It's really important when you're doing this to really monitor your, your your tools as well to make sure there are no there's no debris on any of the tools you're using even going back to this stuff here guys like if you don't clean your 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 cotton 
your cotton very often and you get, you know, it gets a buildup of whatever and you go to wipe your book and there's something caught in there, you'll scratch your book or you'll indent your book. So you got to keep everything clean and everything's got to be, you know, don't be cheap. Throw stuff away. If it's old, it's gone. Throw it away or recycle it and move on to some new, new, new products, okay? Let me show you a few things, guys. And um, let me show you a few things with a comic book here. Let me, uh, let me get it ready for you. Let me just get this all ready here. Whoop. Let me go to the chat room first, and then I'll go to my other area. There we go. Okay, so here's a couple of tips I'm going to give you. Or I'll give you a couple of tips here. And um, all right, so here we go. Again, I'm, this is really awkward for me. This is about, a, about 45 centimeters from me. I'm going to try to fix... Actually, let me just do one thing here. Let me just try to fix my... Uh, so I'm not off the scoops. There we go. One sec. Just fixing my uh, my screen here. Okay. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay. So, because I don't want to be off the screen. I hope you can still hear me. I'll come back and take more questions as well. So when you're working on your book, the first thing you want to do is just inspect your book. Look and see where you have. Use a light. Get a nice, powerful like LED light. Shine on the book if you don't have a good overhead lamp. And see where the problems are. Look really closely and see where the dirt is. Now, in a situation like this, you know, you get a fat, you get a fat eraser like that. You don't want to be using this fat eraser over here, right? So you want to cut your eraser up. Take take a take an exacto knife or whatever, and and cut your eraser into little chunks into small areas and work on it. Or that's where you can use your shield. You take your shield, and as you can see, look at that. All of a sudden. I've just protected this area here right there. So I can take my fat eraser and I can work that area and I'm not going to, I'm not going to hit any of the colored areas. And that's a very, it's very important. Um, alternatively, where did I put them? I just had them. What the hell did I do with them? <laughs> Look at over there. Alternatively, you can use your, your, your precision instruments and you can get right in there. As you can see, it's very small, but again, you want to be very careful because these do leave a lot of residue. When I'm all done cleaning this area, I'm going to take my chem sponge, and this is a dirty one. I'll take a nice clean chem sponge. And again, the chem sponge, you could also cut up into small chunks. I'll take my chem sponge and I'll, I'll wipe it. I'll wipe the area to make sure all the residue's out. And then I will take my, I'll take my, uh, my cloth. I'll take my cloth. And I will just buff the area gently, just very gently, and that's it. That's all. No, 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 it's not spraying it with anything. I'm not doing anything. Just dry, dry cleaning means dry cleaning. It's dry. That's it. Now, before I would have started this book, I probably would have taken my chem sponge and just, I would have just given it the whole thing. Uh, I would have just taken it and wiped the whole thing down. And again, you're being very careful. You're trying to, you're making sure there's no rips or tears. You don't want to pull the, you know, the comic along, uh, the sponge along the comic and then catch a tear and then make the tear worse. So you got to really inspect the comic first to make sure that's not the case. Uh, it's all about, you know, planning, right? Planning. This book, I think, has some tears in the back. Yeah, like over here, for example, like you see this tear down there. Like, I'm not going to take my sponge and go in this direction and then tear it right off. You know what I mean? So you want to just avoid areas like that with your chem sponge and make sure it's, it's, you're not hurting it. Um, something else you want to consider. Uh, I'll go to the back because the back has, got, has a lot more white areas. So this, this, this one here is going to have a lot of, uh, a lot of dry cleaning. And this, these books tend to have a, require a lot of dry cleaning. So how do you work on the book? Where do you start? Eh, I don't know. I, I like to start kind of in the middle usually, and I'll work my way around, you know, I'll work the areas, and then I'll work the edges. I'll use my, I like using my, uh, again, my electric on the, on the edges sometimes. I, I like using that. Um, when you come to the edge of the book, and I had, I had something here. Uh, where did I put it? When you come to the edge of your book, what I want you to do to avoid, because it's hard, it's it's not easy to clean the edges of a book, like right towards the edge there. So what you want to do is take a board, like an old comic board, shove it in there, and it gives your your it gives your um your you got you got some support now. So when you're cleaning the comic, there's less chance of you of you causing you know having a problem or tearing the book or catching the book then causing a tear. Also, you don't want to go back and forth. You don't want to go back and forth at the edge of the book. Over here, you can go back and forth. At the edges, you want to go in one direction, and you want to go out. You want to work your way out, outwards. 
All right, you don't want, and again, I can't even see what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of doing this for your benefit, guys. I can't even see if this book is dirty or not. I'm just kind of showing you some, some little tick, tricks here. Again, at the edge here, work outwards like so, you know? Um, yeah, oh, I forgot also, I'll be right back. I forgot a very important thing. All right. You have to have a duster, a dust, a, uh, a brush, a dust brush. This is a drafting brush. You have to have one of these. You got to always keep keep constantly brushing the stuff, the, the debris off your book. You don't want to keep it in your in your area at all. Because invariably, what could happen is you go to press your book. Uh, you know, uh, a piece of uh, rubber gets, you know, we just don't see it or it gets stuck to the book or whatever. And you press it into the book, and then you got to start all over again. It's a big mess. You want to be very, very careful, okay? So, um, what else can I tell you? Um, it's all about keeping the book safe while you're doing it. It seems it seems simple enough, but you can cause a lot of damage, even just doing dry cleaning, if you're not careful. And I'm working in a very tight area here. It may not seem like it on the, through the magic of YouTube, but I am. But make sure your area is tidy. All your tools are accessible. You've got room to move. Keep your drinks. I know it sounds, I know you're not, you guys aren't going to do this, but keep your drinks away from the area, any food away from the area. Um, spills can happen, of course. Uh, yeah, and, and that's that's pretty much it. And, and practice, 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 practice. Um, I'd love to do a video where I actually go into, you know, how to fix dents and things like that. I just don't have the, the setup here. I, I mean, I, you'd really have to zoom in on on the book and I don't have the the ability at this point to do that but if you have any questions about dry cleaning let me know and i'll be happy to uh to cho to uh to answer them right now we're, we were at the uh, one hour 12 i'll go to their five or ten minutes i'm gonna get out of here guys I, I do have to do some pressing tonight actually so um let me go back to the uh, chat window and see what you guys are saying uh robin yeah okay we did that one already okay did that dave house what can be done to prevent pages from becoming brittle or will this happen naturally over a long enough time well it's all about storage, Dave. It's all about storage. If the book has been left in a garage and it's been hot in the summer and cold in the winter and hot in the summer and cold in the winter, and that's been going on for 25 years and, the, and it's been you know sitting in the open air, the, the pages are going to... are gonna. And these, these books were not made to last, right? Like these comics were what? This one's 25 cents this one year. These books are meant to be read and chucked, not read and stored and kept. It was kind of a new thing in the... In the I think in the, in some guys in the 60s and 70s started collecting these comics and, start, and take, started taking care of them. But for the most part, they were meant to be read and disposed of. So these books were not... Newsprint's not meant to last. So they're going to eventually, you know, not always, but how do you prevent it? At this point, if you've got a book that's already brittle, unless you have it deacidified, you go to someone like Kenny Sanderson and have them actually treat the book, uh, which is not cheap, right? It's not cheap. Um, the book is kind of, it is what it is. And even sometimes the book is too far gone. I've seen Kenny say that the, the book's too far gone. And by the way, that's something that Nippur and I want to start doing as well with the comic doctor. She is skilled to do all that sort of work. We just don't have the setup just yet to do that. But that is something that we plan on doing in the near future at the comic doctor office. Doing a little more restorative work, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, what do you call it? Um, Deacidifying paper and uh, stain removal. This is restor restoration work, though. Not, not, I consider what I do more conservation, but. Anyways, uh, how do you prevent a book from getting brittle? Just take care of it. I mean, store it's all storage, right? So, you know, having it uh, clean and pressed, not adding chemicals to it, I think that's important. I think when you add peroxides and bleaches or any kind of agents to clean the book, you are actually damaging the fibers of the paper. You are lessening the, um, the lifespan of the paper. There have been studies, I remember when I was doing my research early on with this, I think I might even have a, a link to it somewhere, there was a study that shows that even heating up the paper, pressing the book does damage the book. It actually does uh, hasten the, 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 the lifespan of the book. So it's, it speeds up the demise of the paper as it were, but not not as much as you know adding chemicals the paper will so you want to be really just keep that in mind right when you're when you, if you've got a book you really want to hang on to for a long time i would not advise having it uh you know lightened uh using chemical techniques or uv lights those are all you know it's not good for the paper i mean is uv light good for us 
right? It's not, right? It's, 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 you know, is it good to go to a fake and bake and, you know, to a sunning be bed? Is it good for our skin? They tell us it's no good for us, right? So, I mean, if it's not good for us, it's probably not good for paper either. It's not. So, yeah, those types of things will, will quicken the demise of your paper. Uh, but if you've got a nice specimen and you want to take good care of it, either whether you're going to grade it or not, if it's just, you know, keep it in a Mylar bag, uh, put one of those uh, um, deacidifying sheets inside, the, the uh, chamber paper, they call it, put the, a piece of that inside of it. And, uh, you know, acid-free backing boards and store them in a, in, a, in a, not a cold or a too hot dark place, but a cool, dark environment will keep your book looking good for a long time. Uh, oh, what's going on over here? Okay, oops, little jump there. Thanks for the question, Dave. Sport Card Plus says, hit the like, subscribe button. Thanks, Tim, for sharing the skills and love for the comic community. Thank you, Sports Card Plus. Thank you, our polls. Thank you, I appreciate it. I do, I do love this community. I do love comic book collecting. And uh, yeah, and I'll tell you, if, if this whole, uh, you know, if, if, the, if the comic doctor did not exist, I would still be, you know, amongst all of you, you know, shoulder to shoulder, digging through the, the bins, looking for comics and adding to my own collection because I still love doing it so very much. Davey says, how does all that not take off the gloss? What I'm showing you, Davey, is that what you're talking about? Bill Parker, thanks, Kevin. Very interesting. You're very welcome. It was Chilton. Yeah, that's right. And I bought them for every car I had. Well, so did I, right? Because we thought, hey, I'm going to change the spark plugs myself. Hey, I'm going to change this myself. I'm not going to pay. I'm not going to pay some mechanic $200 when I, can, when I can spend five days and do it myself. It's time, right? Time is money too, guys. I got my Camaro I have. I had to redo the engine a few years back. I think you, if you've been following me for any length of time, you know that. There was a part of me. A part of me is like, Take the engine out. Do it yourself. Do it yourself. You can do it. And I, and I could do it. I could do it. But I didn't. I said, screw that. I'm not doing that. That's going to take me a thousand. I'm going to pay some dude 1500 bucks or 2000 bucks, and the engine's going to be done in a week. Or I can do it. It's going to take two months of mess and, and a pain in my ass. And, and am I going to? No. So you know what? Let the professionals do it. Sometimes you got to just say, you know what? Let the professionals do it. My, 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 my toilet's clogged, or I got a, I got a, I got a, you know, a spray, sprung a leak. Am I going to do it myself, or am I going to call a plumber? Sometimes I may feel the, the, the uh, desire to do it myself, but oftentimes I'll just call a plumber. I just don't want to deal with it anymore. Can I do it? Sure, I can do it. Do I want to do it? No, I don't. And the same thing can be said about comic book pressing and cleaning. Because you can do it doesn't mean you want to do it uh, or have time to do it. And I, and I don't know if Roy's watching this or not, but Roy went out and bought a press. And his press is now with me because he 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 bought it and got on, good on him. He was going to do his own books, but you know what? Roy's a busy guy. He's running around doing stuff all day long, and and he doesn't have time to sit there and press comics all day, and he doesn't want to. So he hands them over to me or to other guys we know, and 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 it gets done. Or otherwise, it doesn't get done. So yeah. Uh, F F Lord says, "How do you get rid of dents?" That's another video, my friend. That's a lot of their video. But I'll tell you right now, the first thing I would suggest to you, how do you get rid of dents? Humidify, humidify, humidify. Experiment with how long you can humidify the books for. You'll be shocked at how, how many dents will be removed simply with the humidification. Oftentimes, you need some hand tooling as well. But humidification is really an amazing tool to use, a very simple tool to use uh, to get dents out. Ford, uh, Rob Ben says, those purple labels may be a good thing. Discourage people from from uh compromise yeah i don't know I'm, I'm really on the fence man rob about the whole the whole thing i mean i, I don't know what to say I, I i i'm more concerned about the demise of the paper i don't i mean if i knew that the paper wasn't going to be compromised in in using peroxides and such i might start offering that but at the same time uh, again how much you how much do these people charge for this is it worth it like if you've got a book, like a nothing book, and it, it might be fun if it's your own book and it's not worth very much because the time and effort you're going to put in to fix that book, just go buy another book that's in better shape, right? Because uh, I'm seeing a lot of guys, you know, whitening the pages of books that aren't really worth whitening. And then they get them slabbed, whether it's re restored label or not, you've now exposed that paper to chemical and how much, how long is that going to last now, right? So, yeah. Pappy says, uh... So yeah, and compromising the integrity of the book. So I, I agree with you. I, I think it's freaking a lot of guys out, and it should, you know, um, it should, man. I, I, I just call me a square. I don't care. I just, I just rather keep it simple, man. Heat, 
you know, simple erasers, humidification, press clean, done. You know, uh, chemicals, I really don't want to get into. I think you're opening a can of worms. I said it before, and I'll say it again. If you do it, God bless you. I have no problem with you doing it. I, I just don't, I just, and, and I will, I just won't do it to my client books. That's all. I just, I don't, I won't expose client books to that. I, I think you're looking for trouble. Pappy says, comic doctor, I hope you are not retiring soon since you are telling us all your secret cleaning methods. <laughs> They're not secret. No, I'm not retiring anytime soon, my friend. Um, I'm not retiring soon. Um. And again, these are really not secrets. A lot of this stuff can be found. I, I tell you what, but I, but what I am telling you is you don't have to be too fancy. It doesn't require a lot of fancy gizmos and, and whatever. You will you will be amazed at how 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 uh, how 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 much uh, how effective some of these tools are. Um, you know, just simple tools. And, and Mike said it himself. He bought most of his on Amazon and on uh, and Michaels, and he's amazed at how. You know, he'll be amazed at some of the results he's going to get simply by dry cleaning. That That's what I love, you know. The dry cleaning is is such a, a simple technique. It's actually, like I said, it's very relaxing. It can be very relaxing, too. It's kind of, I find it quite quite fun. Now, some guys might not find it fun. I, I do. I know when Nupur came on, and I mean, Nupur was used to cleaning, like, ancient, you know, Victorian documents, and and, and she showed me, showed me some of the stuff she did. It was crazy. But when she started working on the comics, she said it was a lot of fun. And, and I think she liked it because the gratification of cleaning the book came really quick. It wasn't like waiting weeks and weeks. It wasn't a long, arduous process like I'm sure many of the pieces she worked on um, were. You know, cleaning a comic book, the results can be had and seen very quickly. You know, again, using using tools that are, that are you know, right here. You know, like I said, a uh, uh, chem sponge, precision erasing tools, electric erasers, simply a, st a stellar... Um, white polymer eraser and a, sh and a shield and of course don't forget your dust your dust uh, brush your drafting brush you need that as well those are all you really need to get started um and then david says, yes how does all that erasing sponge and buffing not take off the glass okay okay that's a great question it's because i'm not going crazy if i were to take i'm going to go back to the uh, back to the, the to the um comic again guys really quick so Davey's like, how come you're not taking the gloss off the book? I'm going to tell you something, Davey. You can. You can. And that's what I'm trying to say. If I were to take this eraser right here, okay, and I started erasing right here. Actually, you know what? Even the white area. If I started erasing this white area, just kept going for like, say, 12, 13 seconds, that gloss is gone. The gloss is gone, my friends. You will remove the gloss. Um, if I took my magic eraser and I rubbed and rubbed and rubbed and rubbed and rubbed and rubbed, blue will start coming on here. And eventually, yeah, you will take the gloss off. It does happen. Um, I'm just not going crazy. It's again, it's, you've got to temper your, 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 uh, what you're doing. You've got to kind of gauge how much pressure you're using. And, uh, you can be very, very careful. I have gotten books brought back to me where where people, other people have worked on the books and they've taken, they've taken um, the gloss right off. And I can't do anything about it. I can't put gloss back on, right? It's gone. Once it's gone, it's gone. So again, you have to, before you even start, go over to your local, you know, or if you, unless you have some of your own, find some crappy old books you have. They're not worth anything, 10 cent books and practice on them and get a, you get a feel for it. You've learned pretty quickly how far you can go with, with the, um, with the erasing. You just don't, you don't want to overdo it, man. Because, yeah, you're right. You can take the gloss off. Davy Claire is 100% right. Um, to answer your question, I hope it does. You know, I, I can't, it's hard to explain. You know, put this much pressure on for this amount of time. I don't know. Just start working with the paper and you'll figure it out. But you can remove gloss. You can remove color. These will remove color, these chem sponges. But if they're just used gently and... Um, moderately even less than moderately you won't you, you'll not hurt the book at all um and again just to give you an example guys this is me again i just want to show you the difference in color this is a clean one brand new this is an old one and this is me just wiping the comics very gently okay if this these are designed these are actually designed these are designed for uh cleaning up walls after fire damage they're meant to be you know, wiped on the walls to suck up the soot from the, you know, the, the fire caused. That's what these are made for and not damage the walls. Uh, 
You know, um, these were also used for cleaning fine works of art. The dirt off, you know, I, I, I would imagine they use these in, in museums on paintings or on, uh, you know, just gently. If you, play, if you put this over top of a painting and gently just stroke the painting, like wipe the painting, it will take the dirt off the painting and not cause damage to the painting surface itself. Now, someone earlier mentioned the magic eraser has like abrasive polymers. That's the problem. You don't, you don't want to have abrasive, you know, like, 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 like sandblasting. You don't want to, you know, it's like sandpaper, right? I don't want to use sandpaper on my comic books. I don't care how fine the grit is on the magic eraser. I don't want to rub that on my comic because you're actually putting micro abrasions in it. So yeah, you gotta be very, very careful. Very, very careful. I hope that answered your question, Davey. Uh, custom made, go hit that like button. Oh, 33, come on guys, I wanna get to 40. Hit that like button, please. Um, Pappy, what month of submissions are you currently working on, Doc? Today I actually pulled my first October submission. So we're in September, October right now. I got a couple of Julys, sorry, sorry, a couple of August ones that I'm still working on myself personally. I talk to the people, they know. Um, because I've been really, uh, um, after my dad died and that whole month of December was a real write-off. So I didn't get a lot of CGC submissions done. I've been doing, I've been sent in like almost 350, 400 books to CGC in the last week and a half. So expect a lot of unboxings, guys, coming up very, very soon. Um, back to Davey's question, gloss question. What layer is the gloss? Under the ink, above the ink? Oh, God. Or is it a part of the ink? I'm not even sure. I don't even know how to answer that, Rob. I'm not sure. That's a good question. I wonder if the ink itself has a gloss built right into it. You know what I mean? Because um, I don't think they, they... I don't believe they printed a book and then sprayed it with a gloss. Now, some of the modern stuff, they probably did do that. Um, but this stuff, no. This stuff is... Uh, the ink would probably have a gloss to it, and the rubbing would eventually take that dull would dull that gloss. And I've seen it happen. Um, where the paper inherently might have its own, like when the paper's being made, right, would have a gloss. You know what I'm saying? Like, for example, here we have a piece of just regular old legal size, dull regular old paper. There's no gloss on this paper. You can buy this paper with a gloss on it, right? The back will have kind of a dull finish, and the front will be a gloss. It can still, you can still sand, you can still wipe through that gloss. It's inherently in the paper. I don't think the gloss is like sprayed on. It's in the actual makeup of the paper itself. Does that make sense? I believe that. Now, again, I'm not professing to be an expert on inks and whatever and how, how all the ink is applied and the type of ink, water base, uh, you know, whatever. I'm not there. But yeah. I believe it's inherently in the paper and it's inherently in the ink itself. So it's like buying a it's like buying a paint. You got flat paint, you got semi-gloss, latex, you've got uh, you know, gloss, right? Is that type of thing. I don't think there's like a, a separate layer of, of gloss. It's just in the actual makeup of the ink slash paper. And uh if you rub it, you will take it off. You will. Well, the color will come off first, and then you'll get down to the raw paper, and then you just got raw paper. That makes sense. I hope it makes sense. Um, Jive Turkey has Nip Nippur introduced you to any new techniques that you've been able to apply to comic books. Interesting. You know what she's done? She's actually more, more, more so warned me. More so warned me about things. You know, I, I've shown her. I, I mean, guys, comic books is very specialized, right? And she's never worked at. When she tells her friends, like her her friends at work in like museums and stuff, I'm working on comic books. They're like, comic books. Uh, they're kind of taken aback by that. Like, what the, what, what, why, what? Comic books, really? There's, there's, there's work in the comic book field. And um, so she's learned a lot about that. Um, she's shown me uh, about, about, being, about being more, um, she's taught me more about the, the things like, like glues and tapes. When I find tape on books, she can kind of identify the type of, type of tapes being used you know and she can, can identify the types of paper and what the paper can handle that sort of thing again her specialty is just paper and is in general um i think 
I don't want to say, I hope if she's watching, I don't know if she, she hasn't made herself known if she is or not. I don't know. I think, I think she's, I think for her actually coming and working with the comic doctor at the officer, I think she's been more, she learned more because again, it's a whole new, uh, I wouldn't say medium, but a whole new type of work. Cause she, again, she was used to working on again, like uh, Victorian documents or, um, you know, two, 300 year old books and things like that. Uh, taking the paper, deassifying the paper, right? What I was looking for in in somebody to work at the shop was someone who had uh, respect for paper, first and foremost, and uh, a gentle hand when working with paper. You know, I think she's very cautious, and that's a good thing, like I said earlier. And and I'm teach I'm trying to teach her to be a little more. I don't want to say this, a little more aggressive. I don't I don't like text. I'm I don't think I'm aggressive to be honest. And, um, because, uh, I know she, she talks to me about her training and what she underwent, uh, in, in England when she was doing her, her master's degree and what they were expected to do and how, you know, there's like there's etiquette too. There's etiquette working in museums. There's etiquette working with, 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 uh, antiques and antique papers and what have you. And so I, I learned a lot about that, which I think is very, very cool. Um, again, I'd like to have her on here one day. I don't know if she will. I know Charlo has no interest in being on, on camera. Nepur might. And then you could ask questions all, all about paper. You know, would you like that? I can I can ask her. Um, uh, Davy Claire says I'd love to visit where they print and assemble new comics to see the process. So would I. I th I'd love to do that too, man, big time. Uh, uh, Luke is here as well. How you doing, Luke? Have you covered anything on fingerprints on glossy comics that does that does that don't take off ink? Have you covered anything on finger? No, I have not. Now, fingerprints are different. Fingerprints, like if you've got a, like a, a greasy fingerprint on your comic book, it'll usually wipe off with one of these. A little bit of cotton. If it's going to come off, it'll come off with one of these. More often than not, though, a fingerprint on gloss, it'll come off with one of those. Oops, sorry about that if I hit the hit the microphone there. If, if, you, um, if you have a fingerprint on a book like this, it's oftentimes what happens is you'll see the blue area here. You'll see a you'll see a white fingerprint. Why is it white? Why is there a white fingerprint there? There's a white fingerprint there because the grease, the oils on that person, a kid's finger or the person's finger, actually acted as a chemical stripper. And when they put their fingerprint on there, they removed the ink. So the white fingerprint you're seeing is actually removed ink, and you're seeing the white. And the paper beneath it so you can't you can't fix that that's gone that ink is gone it's almost as though they stripped it right off now if you've got a black fingerprint on blue like this a black fingerprint you know what works fantastic on those chem sponges but again it's you gotta have a very be very delicate now i'm going to show you a little trick too check this out before I do though, think think of something. Imagine we had a micro, you know, a really powerful microscope, and you could zoom in on the paper. You would notice the paper actually has a texture, right? Kind of a bumpy texture. So what I like to do when I have a stain or a fingerprint like that, let me go back to the, let me go back to my workspace here. I'll turn the comic around so it looks better for you guys. When you're working on a comic like this, and say you have a fingerprint, I don't know. Say you've got a, a fingerprint down here, like a, a black, a black fingerprint, which means that dirt from the finger has been placed onto the comic, right? A dirty finger has touched the comic. You haven't removed the ink. You're putting the dirt and grunge on the comic. You take your chem sponge and you, you wipe it. And when I wipe it, I'm not putting a ton of pressure on it. A little bit, but not, not, I'm, I'm not like, I'm not doing that, right? I'm just kind of like that. And what I will do is I'll go in one direction, right? And then I'll go in another direction, then another direction. In another direction. Why do I change the directions? Because again, the paper again is bumpy. If you zoomed in on that paper, it's not as smooth as we think it is. Like our skin. Our skin isn't perfectly smooth, is it? If you took a, if you took a microscope, look at our skin, it's almost bumpy. Well, the same thing. Microscopically, under a microscope, this paper has got a texture to it. So if the dirt is in different areas of the of that of the of the um of the texture, just going in one direction isn't gonna get them all. So I like to go in different directions. I'll do kind of like I'll do like a crisscross. And I find that really does work to get stains, fingerprints out of the paper. Um, 
even if I'm going in one direction, it's not working. If I go in a different direction, sometimes it takes it off. It's because that, that stain is embedded in a different space, I guess. I don't know. Pretty cool, though. So there you go. Hope that helped. Um, Jay Reynolds says, I would think that gloss is similar to that which we see in the backer boards. Kind of. Yeah, I, I would I would agree. It's kind of like, like that. It's kind of like that. So take your backer board. Take your gloss backer board. And start rubbing it with an eraser and see what happens. See how long it takes you to get through the gloss on your backer board. And, and there you go, right? Similar idea. Uh, sports card pull says, similar to backy board. Oh, there you go. Rob Bin, uh, I think you're right. Gloss must be in the paper. It must not be in the ink because the white area also has gloss. It does. I think it's how it's produced. It's in the nature, it's the nature of the uh of the paper. And keep in mind, if you guys know those Canadian white uh comic books, they weren't even glossy. A lot of older comic books from the 40s and the 50s didn't even have a gloss. They were just like almost like newsprint, thicker newsprint. The Captain Marvel books were a good example. Even the old detective, well, that's not true. Some of the old detective comic books and the Captain Marvel books did have a gloss. The Canadian versions of the Captain Marvel reprints, the Canadian reprints of the Captain Marvels, as well as the Canada, Canada Whites, they're called, those just had newsprint covers and they had, they had no gloss at all. So, and, and they're actually really nice to work on because they don't have that gloss. They're, they're, a, little, they're a little more receptive to uh, pressing more than, more than gloss books are. Especially if they have if they have really deep creases, you can sometimes remove creases completely from books that don't have a gloss. Oftentimes, the reason why we still see remnants of creases on glossy books is because that the gloss was cracked, the paper was cracked, and we see it again on a book that's very pulpy that has no gloss finish. It's very dull. If it's got a sharp crease, you can sometimes manipulate that paper so the crease is almost non-existent after a good press or hand hand tooling. It's crazy. Um, Davy Claire, maybe the white is not also is also ink because you can color break white. Um, oh, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure, Davy. I'm not sure, or, or Rob. I'm not sure. Dave House says, can ink be treated? There's a lot of stamps from the older books and it breaks my heart. No, ink ink is on there. If you've got ink of any kind on your on you, one more like to hit 40, guys. Can someone hit that like button to get me to 40? Come on, have a heart. <laughs> I want to get to 40. I like getting 40 is a good number I like. Um, no, if you've got an ink stamp on a book or a marker or whatever, it's on there. It's on there forever. Sorry, Dave House. Not much I can do about that. Uh, the P-Man, so you don't... I like some of those stamps. I've had this conversation before. Sometimes those date stamps are pretty cool. In fact, I had a comic... At, at the shop, I was doing some pricing on comic books today at the shop. I had a few minutes. My daughter was before we had a doctor's appointment. And I found an old comic that when, when it came from Morgan Self, which was a comic store, or a bookstore, I should say, that was located in downtown Osh from the 19, I think, 40s. And it, it closed up in the 80s. And I used to go there for comics in the old days. You can find some real great books there. And here is an old comic book that was from there. I, I love those old date stamps. To me, it, it kind of puts a stamp of history on the book. That book was at that shop at some point in its history. It kind of gives you a a map, a roadmap of, where, of the adventures that book went on. I don't know. Maybe this is nostalgia in me speaking, but I kind of like that. I do. I like that a lot. Or that book that Wayne gave me, the Tomahawk book that Wayne gave me. Uh, had my It's from my old grade school for crying. He found, we just got to talking. He went, he went to a school next to where I went to grade school. And I told him what school I went to, and he remembered. And he went and he picked up an old book, and that book had a stamp from St. Thomas Aquinas. And it was at the school at the same time I was at. It was published like in 81 or something like that, or 79. So it was in my library at my school at the time when I was library at that school. It was pretty cool, man. I loved so that date stamp. I was able to, I knew that that book was in the school at the same time I was. It was kind of neat. I don't know. I like those date stamps. So there. Embrace those date, date stamps. Embrace those date stamps. Okay. Um, so you don't normally stay erasing one spot for more than not even. Yeah, it depends if, if it even needs it. If there's no dirt on it, I'm not even going to erase it, right? I don't, I don't erase for the sake of erasing. If a book is relatively clean and doesn't even need much detail work, I just rub it a couple of times, like with this broadside. I go whoop, whoop, flip it over. And this will grab any superficial dirt that's on the book. That's it. If it doesn't have any, you know, grime on it. So... 
I, I see if I had if my camera could zoom in more. I don't know if it could or it can or not. I'll have to experiment. If I can zoom in and and be able to show you the different types of dirt that I can clean with a dry clean, I will try that and do a second part to this video. Oh, 42 likes. Thanks, guys. I will try to do that for you guys later. Okay, um, but. I don't know if it'll it'll show up on this camera or not. I don't know how good the the picture quality is. I assume it's pretty good, but um, uh, Jive Turkey says, "Just think of photo printer paper you buy the gloss satin mat exactly, exactly. That's exactly the way it is, Jive Turkey. Pappy, I have some I have yellow fingerprints left on black cover. Are these removable? Yellow fingerprints, orange." Orange fingerprints, you mean? How old's the book? I'm curious, Pappy. Um, Luke says, I like stamps that show the shop as well. Me too. Okay, that's cool. And pencil date stamps, you erase those. I'll tell you, Davey Claire. Yes, I do. If I'm, if I'm dry cleaning a book, I will take all pencil marks off. Oh, I got in trouble once doing that. I did a job for uh, Steve L. I'm not going to mention any names here, but Steve L. In Toronto. And he's a... Uh, a real uh, collector of old, um, very unique uh, uh, paper product. Um, and um, he he gave me some Canada Whites once to work on. And he didn't know me very well. And I didn't know him very well. And he had, they had dates on them. And I erased them all. And when he got them back, he's like, oh! I said, what, 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 what? And I'm like, uh, he's like, you erase the dates. Says, yeah, well, I dry clean the books. And he, so never dry. So yeah, I learned that day. Don't, don't clean, don't take off date, uh, pencil dates for Steve. <laughs> Most guys want them gone, but he doesn't. He likes it on there. So yeah, it's a part of the, the patina of the book is a part of the history of the book, whatever you want to call it. And some guys really, really dig it. So you gotta, you gotta give them what they want. Right. But if you, if you give me a book to dry clean, there's, pa there's pencil on that book. It's coming off. St. Thomas, Oshawa, actually. St. Thomas, Joy Coco, uh, Oshawa. Uh, Pappy, it was ASM book, first black cat appearance. Interesting. Yellow, eh? Sometimes I see yellow fingerprints on really, really tanned books. And it's almost in the paper. It's almost like it's foxed into the paper. If it's yellow from ink, it might, it might come off. It might come off. I have to see it. Send me a picture, Pappy. Send me a picture. Guys, we've been going for an hour 40. I'm done. It's already 8.12. And I got some more. Uh, I've got some more um, books that I need to get to. So let me get back to my main screen here. Guys, thank you so much for coming out today. Listen, I'm very, very close to hitting that 2,000 subscriber mark. I think I'm like 50-something subscribers away. Share the video. Uh, get more guys and gals involved, and we can give these books away and these prizes away finally. Uh, thank you. I hope this video uh, helped you a lot. If you have any questions, any further questions I did not address here on the video, feel free to ask a question in the comment section. I'll do my best to get there and answer those questions as well. Also, if you have uh, very specific questions, you can always just email me as well. Info at thecomicdoctor.com. Also, guys, remember, we are now at about a 12-week turnaround to get to your comic books. If you have books you want to submit, and I've been telling people that, and the numbers are starting to go up. So if you've got books you want to submit, uh, now's a good time to do so. Uh, feel free to go to my website, comicdoctor.com, and you can fill out a, a submission form there and hold your spot yourself a spot in our queue. All right? That's it for me, guys. Uh, hit the notification bell. I'll be coming back on here at least twice, two more times this week. I have an unboxing to do, and I want to share with you a really fun Funko Pop custom of yours truly. You're going to really like that. So uh, that'll be on Thursday night for sure. Okay, guys, until next time, take care. Thank you so much for staying, uh, staying with me this long, and we'll see you again very, very soon. Bye for now.